Warning, extreme language. Before we start the show, I wanted to provide this fair warning. We will be using derogatory language like anal assassin, anal astronaut, ass bandit, bone smuggler, buggerer, bull dyke, bumhole engineer, butt pirate, butt rustler, cock holster, cock jockey, daffodil, donut muncher, dyke, bag, faggot, berry, fruit, fudge packer, knob jockey, meat masseur, Mary, Nancy, pansy, poof, queen, queer, sperm smuggler, sperm gurgler, and turd burglar. If you are offended by any of these words or phrases, I suggest you... Well, I, I guess it's a little late, but enjoy the show. Welcome to Speak of the Devil presents the trapezoidal roast of a den or den. Hosted by Reverend Campbell and featuring roasters Patrick DeMarco of Enlightened Soul Tattoo, Magister David Harris of Dave's Custom Media, Witch Heather Height, a.k.a. Heidi Knights, Reverend M.A. Mandrake of The Second Law, Reverend Darren Deicide of DarrenDeicide.com, Citizen Tom Seaman, Seaman, well, whatever, dude, you know your last name, of Old Style Music Nights, and last but not least, Magister Dr. Robert Johnson of The Satanic Warlock. And now, your favorite radio host without an actual radio show. You listen to him every week after you've listened to all your other valuable podcast content. Let's cut the shit. You've never heard of him. So you'll believe anything I say at this point. Adam. Dumb. Campbell! Welcome to Speak of the Devil Presents, Trapezoidal Roast of a Den or Den. It is my greatest pleasure to bring you only the second satanic comedy roast in history. For those of you who worry that the sequel may not live up to the original, I would like to give you some assurances as we've patterned this sequel after some of the greatest in cinematic history. Films like Batman and Robin, uh, The uh, Son of Max, <laughs> Jaws the Revenge, <laughs> Superman 4, Quest for Peace, and Speed 2, Cruise Control. I could go on, but I think you get the point. <laughs> no, we are all here for a den, our den. The man who puts STD in WTF. Oh, man, the man actually was... volunteered for this. Mm -hmm. His soul-crushing need for attention has reached historic proportions. <laughs> or the most vile of forms of attention, the comedy roast. Now, I can't promise comedy, but I can promise mean. We are going to get down and dirty here, folks. Oh, Not like a den's ass shit. on every date ever, only with decidedly fewer fists. You see, I met a den or den the first time at the Black House, but it wasn't until the next morning that I really got the full a den or den experience. Darren, my wife, and I were sitting at a diner in the middle of Jersey with bacon and eggs. I had a little bit of sauce on mine, and I was really ready to dive in when a den comes prancing out of the bathroom and plops down on the seat across from me, announcing to the entire table and, with his screechy, pitchy voice, the entire room, that his ass is bleeding. Oh, I only said that so you'd remember Oh my me. God. I Fuck, haven't been man. able to have eggs with salsa since. How's that for bleeding ass? <laughs> you see, Adan Ardan is an open book. He's willing to tell you every sexual escapade he's ever had, thought of, or human history has ever invented. And he's going to give you footnotes for him. Mm -hmm. But he is a consummate professional. And that's what attracted me as a producer and podcaster to him. Oh, His segment, Militant Eroticism on Nine Cents, oh. is my personal 13th favorite segment. What's that? <laughs> there were only nine? It still works. In truth, we've always had a blast discussing all manner of topics, and I would never give up any of that experience with him. I mean, after the year of a steady regimen of antibiotics, I think that more fondly. In the it's moment, it wasn't so him. great, but now, you know, you tend to remember the good things. So let me set the stage for you. Aden has collected his closest friends, confidants, and I collaborators to roast the, the panel. We'll take turns coming up here one at a time and letting Aden know how much they hate him and that they've only had him around so that they can say the word fag in public. <laughs> After this miserable scat fest, Aden is going to come up here himself and try to give it back to us, but let's be fair, his two and a quarter inch dick isn't even long enough to get past Patrick DeMarco's hemorrhoids. Oh, so this should be pretty shit. damn fun. Speaking of Patrick's hemorrhoids, we have one here on the dais. Oh no, that's that's actually Patrick. Oh man, that was awful. That was just fucking it's gonna be awful. much less funny than I thought. Patrick is to comedy what a den is to eating pussy. He tried it once, 
decided it was vile and disgusting and never went back to it again. Just kidding, Patrick is to comedy what Patrick is to sucking dick. He's terrible at it, no one ever wants him to fucking do it, but anytime you fucking see the guy, he tries to go down. <laughs> that's hilarious, that's hilarious. That Patrick DeMarco, everyone. Oh, once again, I'm doing another one of these roasts. I should have never signed a fucking contract. Oh, who the fuck would ever That's okay, I'm getting anything. paid an awful lot, probably more than anybody else up here. <laughs> it's good to get in on the ground level. First of all, I just want to say that it's a truly a pleasure to be part of the only Satanic Roasts. Yes. So let's give it up, everybody. Let's give a round of applause to our Roast Master, Reverend Campbell or Reverend Phil fucking Donahue. That's right. Super ill, irrelevant still. Every time I hear your voice, Adam, I want to kill myself. How I'll do it is I'll climb to the top of your ego and jump down to your fucking IQ. Okay, that's, that's, uh, that's how I feel about that. Okay. If it wasn't for Adam Campbell, there would never be satanic radio because no one else really gives a fuck anymore. Um, so we're going to be getting down to our roasty this evening. But first of all, I'd like to like to welcome some of my fellow roasters. So we got Magister Ed Harris. My name is Dave Harris. <laughs> I still don't care what the fuck your name is. <laughs> David Harris, or Ed Harris, whatever the fuck his name is, is like the Kermit the Frog of porno. You're green and slimy and you smell like pork. That's right, speaking of pork, your wife is here, Heather Heights. Let's give her a round of applause, everybody. Heather Heights here, that's, that's fantastic. You know, comedy's not really your thing. I think you should shell shade, because you're so fat, I think that, that would be the best thing you could do. Oh. Makeup doesn't cover up stupid. Just, just wanna let you know that. It's good that you're here, it's good to see you guys. So, my other favorite here is Reverend Token. And hey. Mandrake is here. Token's my thing. You know, Mandrake has lost a lot of weight. He's been on that all-you-can-meat-swallow diet. More like all the <laughs> cock you can swallow. I don't know why your teeth are so white. You've been brushing them with fucking semen. But you know what? In all honesty, you look really good, man. Last time I saw a face like that, I gave it a banana at the fucking zoo. <laughs> so we're going to keep going here down the, the list of irritated assholes. We got Tom, Sinan, Sanan, whatever the fuck his name is. I know you make shitty t-shirts and that's pretty much it. But I want you to know that someday you won't be half the man your mother is. <laughs> that's right, David. Laugh it up. Oh, man. Reverend Campbell, I just wanted to let you know we got the results back of your colonoscopy. They found your head. <laughs> oh, let's keep going down here. We got Magister Robert Johnson here. Magister Johnson, it's just truly an honor to have someone of your stature being part of the only satanic roast. Mm -hmm. um, in all the years that you worked with Hef and learned from him and studied him, you didn't use any one of his good ideas. <laughs> well, that's not a fucking joke. That's a real fucking question. I want to know. Did you even read the satanic world? Like, I mean, you wrote it, but did you read it? Did you actually think that this was going to sell or were you just not, not really there? You know, I know you want to emulate the rat pack and more like ratatouille in a fucking suit. Uh, so, uh, I'm glad that you're a part of this thing. I don't know why you're here, but that's, that's great. He's here. Cause um, I'm fucking let's give awesome. a round of applause to Magister Johnson, everybody truly an honor that you're here. And I, uh, you let's just, all let's just get this over with. Sticks, we got right. Darren <laughs> D aside. Darren, over the years, I've given you a lot of money for music lessons and singing lessons, and you've used none of them. Where the fuck did that money go? Bear. That's money what we would like to find out, because a lot of us have invested in you, and we still oh, yeah. aren't seeing any results. I think your shows would be better if you just didn't say anything or sing anything or play anything. I think you should just shut the fuck up. I think that would be the best. <laughs> So with all the irritated assholes on here, let's go to our man of the hour, Mr. Aiden Andres, Andres, whatever the fuck you say your name. You are the Andy Dick of St. Louis. <laughs> Horns Magazine is probably the absolute worst fucking thing you could ever fucking put out. Horns Magazine, I guess. I don't know what the point is. I mean, I guess you've been working close with Bob, and that's probably why your magazine sucks. Um, Aiden one time asked me if I was gay. <laughs> I said, gay? I'm straighter than the pole your mother dances on at the titty bar. 
Oh, jeez, man. Aiden, of all the fucking people we could get to roast, how the fuck did we pick you? You are just, just, just awful. You're just fucking awful. But uh, you know what? I want to say thanks come up with for allowing me to come on here and roast you. We only roast the ones that we love. Everybody here is amazing and super hilarious, except Reverend Campbell. Um, <laughs> But uh, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of this thing, and uh, this has been brought to you by Speak of the Devil, the sweetest smelling podcast in the world. He thinks he can. He thinks he can. We know he can't. We know he can. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. That was, no, honestly, that was really funny, man. And yeah, it does smell sweet, don't it? <laughs> Next up is the Sultan of Spanking Vids, the Dawn of Domination Flicks. The master of submissive clips that no one has ever seen. Ooh, very funny. <laughs> I guess it's not really something for applauding, but for the sake of it. Master David Harris, people. Thank you very much, Adam Campbell. Adam Campbell, very much the uh, the Milo Yiannopoulos of sadism. Flamboyant, <laughs> <laughs> outspoken, and we're all. Pat DeMarco is here. What can you say about Pat DeMarco? That wasn't said on the last one of these fucking things that we did. Uh, guy does a walking impression and he looks like a gremlin if you fed him shit and self hatred after fitting. Oh my god! Uh, man. Fucking Michael brutal. Anthony's here. Reverend Mammy Mandrake. Um, Michael Anthony recently started a, uh, a high protein, a high meat diet, uh, which probably explains why he's here on Indian's Row. <laughs> has become more racially inclusive by including the other token of the group. <laughs> Hi, Darren. Darren <laughs> plays in a band called The Wedding Funeral. Oddly enough, those are two events that his girlfriend hopes to hold for him on the same day. Bob Johnson's here. Bob Johnson. My mentor. Um, in an age where porn was going digital, Bob decided to continue to publish a magazine. <laughs> Which is proof that Viagra does not cure sex. <laughs> oh, Bob is actually, man, a lot of you may not know this, Bob is a great wingman to go out and try to pick up women with. He really is. He's five minutes out with Bob at a bar, and he'll have women flocking up to you, just begging you to get this creepy old fuck away from you. <laughs> 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 uh, have we made all the who the fuck is Tom Shinin Shinin shit fuck what is his fucking name? <laughs> Why is he here? <laughs> fuck, God damn it! I've got a four on my card. I gotta sit on a dais with this fucking zero. Who is he? Why? Why is he here? I don't understand. And that brings us to a dean. Yes, a dean, my friend. Um, a dean reminds me of all the gay kids that I knew that got bullied in school and why we bullied them. <laughs> God, you've got a punchable face. Holy shit. Wait, if you ever look at a Dean, he's got that, that look on his face like he's about to drop some kind of a joke on you that's not gonna be funny. And it's just, he's punchable. Just a punchable fucking face. Ah, oh, holy shit. A dean has fucked more black men than the U.S. judicial system. <laughs> and he has sucked so much black dick that he's an honorary Kardashian. <laughs> and a dean, I hope you love this, brother. Um, glad we can all get together and do this for you. Uh, great Horns magazine is awesome. It's a fantastic product. You're a fucking, you're one of my best friends. Thank you, and thank you for having us. Take care, buddy. Love you. And that is why I keep David around. This guy is fucking hilarious. Now, if you could only use some of that talent for your videos, you could actually afford dinner tonight. <laughs> now you're all in for a treat, because next up is Heather Height, AKA Heidi Knights. Ow! <laughs> I just love that from the first one. Heather is best known for her spanking and domination flicks. I mean, they're a little bit like watching someone dust. You know someone's got to do it, but you'd be damned if you want to watch the fucking thing. Let's give it up for Heather Height. <laughs> oh, Adam. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I just want to get one thing out of the way right off the top. We both know that you want it. Oh, yeah. It's been pretty clear 
the tension. Yeah. So next time we're in the same place at the same time, mm -hmm. you can suck Dave's dick. Oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> gosh, man! So I noticed I'm the only girl on the platform this time. Unless that guy from Germany is actually a girl. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I don't know if he is, but... So I, I look forward to all your dumb, hacky vagina jokes. Oh, you're not the only <laughs> pussy here, Heather. <laughs> I mean, Adam <laughs> Campbell's here and Patrick Campbell. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Uh, Matt DeMarco? Pat? Pat DeMarco? I was, like, I wanted to say something before. I thought you were a midget <laughs> or a little person. And then, you know, you did the, you hosted the last roast out of that storage container. Oh, that was, was, awful. That was that just was, you know, fucking awful. Just, you were just being pragmatic. I mean, if you're small enough that you could live in a storage unit, then why not save the money? And I also, I could tell that you've never seen our porn because they're fetish films but you know mm -hmm. i understand because you can't really get a wi-fi connection in a storage bin <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry about that dr <laughs> magister robert johnson he is a very sexy very sophisticated debonair suave older man who can actually give you advice and teach you how to pick up women in 1967. <laughs> Darren Deicide. So I guess everybody like knows that Darren is supposedly Asian, but the first time I met him, I gave him my laundry and he did like a really shitty job. <laughs> oh, I think that's, that's the wrong kind of Asian, isn't it? You're like Filipino? That's the so Cal gone isn't your ancient Chinese secret. That's fine. But the first time that he he said to me that he sings the bruise, I just thought it was a special occasion way of talking about beer. I think that Darren is actually Mexican. I don't he doesn't look Asian. He he looks Mexican. I think he tells people that he's Filipino just to sound more exotic. And a dean, my special little gay man. A dean, I have been saying your name wrong for eight years. We hosted a show together. We were practically siblings, sort of, in a if I was your much, much older sibling from a previous marriage, you know, from one of your father's other wives. I, um, you've never corrected me. I know that uh, other people call you a den, and I think it sounds retarded. I just so I just refuse. I'm not going to call you a dean. I I always wanted a special like uh, gay bestie, you know, because if <laughs> if television and movies are to be trusted, gay men are like these magical beings that can fix your life and and give you like um, advice on your clothes and help you decorate your house and help you like raise your children and stuff like that. And I guess, uh, I don't know, Adine, I, I don't think you're gay. I think that you might be a lesbian. How fucking dare you? I'm not a lesbian. <laughs> less magical. I swear to God, I'll show you people okay, my car. So I forgot last time we did this to, to say nice things about everybody. Good night. <laughs> Uh, apparently, I'm going to suck David's dick. I'm okay with that. <laughs> no, no. Heather Hyde is really fucking sexy, and she brought it tonight, right? I mean, just fucking hilarious. You can always count on her in a pinch to bring it. Like the loaf Aden takes in the mouth every time M.A. visits. <laughs> like M.A. Mandrake is next, people. And may I say, AIDS looks great on you, brother? Though to be fair, I did warn you not to bed down with a den. Just because he can take a big black dick in the ass doesn't mean you have to give it to him. Next time, just shit in his mouth and leave like everyone else. You don't have to take an STD on your way out the door, you can just get the fuck out. Reverend M.A. Man. Okay, Adam. Thank you very much. By the way, 
Is this your roast? <laughs> are, are you still begging for my attention? I mean, <laughs> this is a den roast. Get over yourself, get over the whole fucking thing. We're having fun here, you have to come attack me personally? Okay, getting back to my original train of thought. Aden Arden. Aden Ardenis. We all know he is a homosexual. Aden makes it clear that he is gay. He makes it as clear as he makes it clear that I am black. For those of you who don't know, Aden likes to call me Token. Now this is all in good fun, of course. But you know, I can't help thinking this has something to do with stereotypes. I, I don't seem to fit into his neat little idea of what a negro is. Have I even mentioned the numerous times that Aden has plopped himself onto my lap at balls and parties? Have I mentioned his transvestite karaoke? Have I mentioned the time I did an illustration for Aden at his request? I said yes without even thinking, and before you know it, Aden has me drawing him in flagrante delicto <laughs> with none other than Satan himself buggering hey, oh my our God. Oh, man. All right, Aden, you're here, you're queer, we are used <laughs> to it. But of course, Aden has to drag everyone down with him, doesn't he? <laughs> Everywhere he goes. But we have good times, don't we? Yeah. We do, we do have good times. When you show up, <laughs> a white guy who calls me token, Aden is late to a lot of things. I don't know what takes him so long. I think it might be the, the primping and the, the picking out of the outfits and all that stuff. I don't know. I'm straight. As for the rest of you, try to be a little less like Aden. Don't speak to stereotypes and cheap jokes. I expect that from Aden, not from you. But whatever. All I've got to say is, if y'all keep that shit up, I'm going to get real black on your ass one day. <laughs> All right, I'm going to calm down now and say Aden is a wonderful guy. He's a great friend, an exemplary warlock, and a lot of fun. <sighs> what else nice can I say? All right, I'll keep it short and sweet. Hail Aden Arden. Hail Satan. <laughs> <laughs> great job, man. Great job. You know, Reverend M.A. Mandrake, there's not quite anyone like him. Who else could take two and a half minutes of comedy and make it feel like a fucking eternity? <laughs> and now it's time for the fag hag herself, the little Asian princess of 07306, Darren Deicide. Not many people know that Darren Deicide is a Lindy Hop enthusiast. Watching him dress up in those suits and prance around is so cute. He's just like my little toddler when he put on his daddy's clothes and acted like the big man going to work. <laughs> He looks so cute. He's like a little man. So cute. You're such a big boy. There's the aside, everyone. First, let it be known, you've all been saying his name wrong. Besides, hey, fag, he responds mostly to a dean. Oh, you fucking Say it traitor. Say with me now. A D. Dick. <laughs> He doesn't want you to know, but that is the proper pronunciation. That's not name. how you say my name, you <laughs> I really don't know why I'm indulging this, because my entire friendship with Aideen is a 24-hour, 365-day-a-year roast. Anyway, but I will say this, as somebody who knows the guy really well, this whole roast is a put-on, because the roast is really all on us. There is oh. nothing Aideen likes more than having his narcissism indulged. And you all have fallen for it. He's having the last laugh. <laughs> this is a man that takes 60 minutes in the bathroom to get ready for an event because he's fluffing his pubes, okay? <laughs> but if you're really a friend of Aideen's and care deeply about him, don't worry about having to feign laughter at his horribly bad jokes. Or don't worry about having to smile and pretend like his analysis of Marilyn Manson is deep. You don't even have to worry about starting the healthcare fund for his future STD treatment. <laughs> worry that he may miss his own funeral for not leaving the house. Please, people, send care packages. Adine is afraid of elevators, folks. Elevators. If you want to have a good time, tell him there's an important meeting you need to have with him on the 86th floor of the Empire State Building. Then present him with a bouquet and gold medal for a champion stair climber once he gets there. <laughs> <laughs> Will that even be necessary?
After all, fairies yeah. can fly. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ass. <laughs> See, Aideen doesn't want you to know how gay he is. Aideen likes manliness. Lots of it. In his rectum. <laughs> Make no mistake, though. Despite what he might say about masculinity, Aideen's inner spirit animal is a 16-year-old schoolgirl from the 90s. <laughs> Don't believe me? I wish I could hijack his daily playlist. Chocked full of hits from artists like Wilson Phillips, Whitney oh, Houston. Oh, fuck you. My daily <laughs> playlist is like sets. Marilyn Manson. If I could be a fly on the wall to watch him prance like Lana a schoolgirl every day. Uh, I guess this is a part now where I have to say something nice about this putz. I mean, dear old friend of mine. Nadine, <laughs> may your cup runneth over. I only wish you the best in life. A life full of... Incestuous relatives, pre-op female to male pansexuals, <laughs> and the occasional minor case of treatable herpes. <laughs> Love you, man. Go home. Thank you, Darren. I think we can all agree you should stick to music. Your comedy <laughs> Next up is Tom Cena. No one's ever heard of Tom Cena, and that's a good thing because you've never heard anyone say Tom Cena fucks wild okay. animals. Oh my god! Now it's not true that Tom Cena fucks wild animals, which is why you've never heard anyone say that Tom Cena fucks wild animals. But let's just say for a second that Tom Cena did fuck wild animals. You have to ask him, Tom, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you fucking wild animals? This is disgusting. This is vile. It's just sick. It's wrong. But that's okay, you would never ask that because no one's ever said that Tom Cena fucks wild animals. <laughs> <laughs> Tom oh, Cena, man. everyone. Oh, wow. Thank you, Reverend Campbell. So glad I could be here. Thank you. Hmm. I am Tom. Most of you people don't know me, and I think that is my advantage at the other roast, so no know most of these people either. Except for Aiden and Darren. And Reverend Campbell, I know you because of your videos. I know the rest of this panel are a bunch of smut mugglers or something. Oh, like man. So we'll <laughs> see what this episode becomes. First thing, we are here to talk about Aiden. And Aiden is a writer of militant eroticism. He's also the publisher for Horns Magazine. Aiden, you're a chronic masturbator. You're a gay witch. You're an hysterical Merlin Manson fanboy. You're an everyday pervert and a dominant sexual deviant. Yeah. And yeah. those <laughs> are your good qualities. That was a terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible good qualities, Tom. You know, Aiden, the thing I hate about you most <laughs> is the way you dress on your days off. Strutting around in Jersey City in those white hippie flannel <laughs> shirts what? and those, those pants, dude, you look you look like a pedophile. Really? <laughs> I wasn't in for what, three days. I've seen parents pull their kids away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw some of them calling the cops. Oh, shit. That's not a good quality. Sexual deviant? Yeah. What white <laughs> smell? It's not. What the? These are my dogs. This is Yeah. Are those your dogs or is that your wife? <laughs> 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 Drove up to Darren's place Ouch. and he and Ethel came out to greet us like normal human beings do. You were hanging out of your window, flapping your arms around and screaming like a queen. Are those guys you were to me, Sarah? If there wasn't a guy sucking your cock underneath that window, you would have taken flight. <laughs> <laughs> you people may wonder how Aiden and I met. Well, it's not through Grinder. We know most of Aiden's friends. He knows them through Grinder. <laughs> not me. I met Aiden, as I said before, because of Derek. And Darren may refer to Aiden and him as the odd couple in a, <laughs> the foreword of a militant eroticism. Well, if you've ever seen those guys together in a room, it's not the odd couple. It's dumb and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Darren, so do you remember the first time we met? Or when you came to our place in Belgium? Was 
it was gonna be fairly easy. I told you where we lived, you had to drive from point A to point B. An hour later, we were still not at our place. You know why, the dumbass, he drove into a one-way street, the wrong direction. He was drunk as fuck at the time, and he got pulled over. I do have to say, he got a police escort to our place, and no ticket. What? Good job, Darren. Best of all, good job, boy. By the way, Darren, one more thing. Um, I know you're a blues musician. You see yourself as a, an artist. You have a je ne sais quoi, swag. Dude, you're this high. Buy normal black pants. It's not a point. Yeah, maybe. Never mind, you're a full grown. No, you're not a full grown man. <laughs> Baby gap problem. <laughs> the DNA testing you told me about, Darren. Aiden told me you want to do that as well. But there was one big problem. You know, for the DNA test, you have to spit in this little tube and send it to a laboratory. <laughs> Aiden couldn't do it. He just could not do it. You know why? Because Aiden does not know how to spit. He always swallows. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Aiden. I don't think I was that harsh on you. Not at all. I could have called you a butt pirate. <laughs> I could have called you a fag. Mm. I could have called you a lot of really terrible things. But I'm not going to do that. Because you know why I love you. I respect you way too much to call you a butt pirate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Even if you are. <laughs> but know this. I love you. I respect you. I think you're a great writer. And please, be gentle for me. <laughs> I'm a fool mm -hmm. this thing. <laughs> Can't wait to hear the rest of this. That was just weird. Fucking orders, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, I know comedy isn't your thing, but when your dogs are booing you off stage, I mean... <laughs> Need a fucking hint, man. Yeah. Last up is Magister Dr. Robert Johnson. Now you best know him from his publishing of Old Nick Magazine and also the Satanic Warlock. More recently, he has his website, Satanic Warlock, after the book. Um, I gotta tell you though, from a guy who created the Satanic Warlock, a volume centered around individuality and originality, You'd think you'd have a better website. I mean, this thing looks like every other WordPress website ever. <laughs> talk about unoriginal. And can I just talk to you really quick about this? What the hell is this? Look at this cover. It looks exactly like the Book of Mormon. Like, I don't know which one is which. What are you trying to go for here? Magister Johnson here. So I was asked to uh, do a roast for our friend Aden. Or is it? A Dean, or is it Aiden, or is it Owen? I never knew what his real name was. I was introduced to a Dean, I guess we'll go with a Dean, uh, mm -hmm. back at a party some years ago. And um, what struck me right off the bat was that um, he's very gay. <laughs> very gay. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, when I put my cigar too close to him, it lit by itself. <laughs> <laughs> then has some quirks about him. Um, he co he constantly talks about sex, and he's constantly talking about men in the room. They never seem to talk about him. <laughs> man, he's he's a oh man, he's kind of twinky looking. <laughs> but uh, yeah, other than that, I have to say he really doesn't get it. <laughs> uh, we were talking about music. And uh, Sinatra came on, and as most people know, I have a, a real affinity for Sinatra. Uh, he didn't know who he was. Where do you live, Adin? What <laughs> planet are you on? I know Satanists are supposed to have their own thing, and but broaden your, your outlooks. 
Oh, that's right. Sinatra wasn't gay. <laughs> no, man, that was so awful. You people aren't professional comedians. But joking aside, <laughs> a dean is quite an exemplary warlock. Uh, when High Priest Peter Gilmore and I came up with the concept for Horns Magazine, which you is came up with a satanic gay <laughs> magazine, sort of a, a sister or brother, however you take your you magazine came to up with. Old Nick, which I published for more than ten years. You know. <laughs> Not what um, happened. We we floated the idea around, and no one really stepped up but Adin. He, he did he did take on the challenge, and he started it from scratch with very little input. I guided him along the way, and, and he he took all of the criticisms and the knowledge, and really made it a quite interesting publication, and which is flourishing now, as far as I understand. So kudos to Adin. I mean, again, all kidding aside, he's a great guy, and he did what all exemplary warlocks should do, and that's do, and not just talk. So, hey, Aladdin, everything we said, you know, is in good fun. So keep up the good work, my friend. Hey, Aladdin, hail Satan. You know, Magister Johnson, you're supposed to be dipping your cigar in, like, scotch or whiskey. It's not a dentist. Really? <laughs> <Mary. laughs> now, for the man of... I can't. For the queer of the hour, there's nothing manly about this queen. You know, a den or den has fucked more boys than the Catholic Church. You know, given a choice between a life of honest hard work and an STD-filled ass romp, well, I... I guess we know which way uh, a den landed. Right on his back with his legs up in the air. You have all the riding talent of a blind, mildly retarded, AIDS-infested chip. You're a talentless hack who plays on his homosexuality worse than Jeffree Star. You know being gay doesn't make you interesting, talented, or relevant, right? Hell, nowadays it barely makes you tolerable. You may notice that all your friends are drinking heavily every time you see them, it's just to fucking deal with you. You're a pain in the ass. <laughs> no, the truth is I absolutely love you and I absolutely adore working with you. You are a stand-up guy and a perfect example of Satanism in action. A den or den, everyone. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for saying in public what you've said to me for years in private. Now everybody knows what dicks you are and what I have to put up with. You, <laughs> you know, like Very David. Funny. David is the king of dicks. And why not? He has to compensate somewhere for the lack of, um, well, the lack of it presented in his movies. You know, buddy, here's a tip for you. Get your cock out of the film and get some respectable sizes in there. You may get a bigger audience. No pun intended. I mean that, um... <laughs> you know, but David, in general, is big on overcompensating. Um, I mean, to get any attention from any gender, he had to dress up as a Boogie Nights parody. I, I mean, his closet is like the next installment of the Scary Movie franchise. <laughs> Overdone and unnecessarily loud. Which is weird, because David's loud enough as it is. Yeah, but oh, man, man, those points awful. aside, I... I respect David Harris. Uh, he was the voice of Satanism when I was a teenager. I listen to Satanism today all the time. So if you ever wonder why I turn out to be an arrogant, perverted pornographer, <laughs> thank David Harris. <laughs> you, you, you can't blame David on his own. I mean, he Heather Height was there too. Uh, you know, I, I love Heather very much. She, she's been like a mother to me since I moved out here. You know, we joined the Church of Satan together. We were elevated at the same time. We call each other, you know, satanic twins. <laughs> you know, but like all twins, we have our differences. Um, you know, I'm blonde, I'm bearded, and I'm not in my husband's porno films. <laughs> um, you know, I also don't prowl parties like some faux ginger cougar who needs a real man <laughs> oh. at the sight of my paddle. You know, but we do have other things in common. We both think we're funny. We both think we look good <laughs> naked. Uh, we both can't apply makeup without looking like a cracked out Frankenfurter. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, really? but, you know, I love you, Heather. Just, um, 
you know, try a mirror before you come to an event or <laughs> But you know, on the topic of people who think they're funny, my good buddy Token, or as I like to call him now that people have stolen my nickname for him, Ma. Oh. Since he's now goes by M-A. Why not just make it one syllable, Ma? Um, <laughs> he's the only guy I know who likes cheesy puns as much as I do. One of my few friends that also eats meat. And he made sure to tell me that every time I see him. <laughs> Much the same way a vegan will remind you that they don't eat any animal products every minute, he is as evangelical about it as I am about eating man meat. And he has and sucking oh. you, you, you know I sucked it, right? Just throwing that oh, out there. Man. I'm gay. <laughs> the only difference between him and I in that respect is he can talk about it on Facebook. Uh, you know, now people like to rip on M.A. because he's not your typical black guy. You know, he's well-spoken. He doesn't <laughs> shoot people. <laughs> he doesn't get shot by the cops or beaten up by them. Um, you know, he instead is like a typical Connecticut yuppie. Um, I half expect him to marry a girl named Minnie and play tennis or suddenly find out <laughs> this is really just a big Dave Chappelle skit. You know, any minute just gonna take it down, it's going to be like a black guy who's going to KKK. <laughs> but, you know, at least M.A. is, you know, he's, he's very talented. He has an array of projects going on, unlike Patrick DeMarco. You know, <laughs> you know, Patrick, we get it. You can do Christopher Walken. And, you know, the only thing that makes you believable is probably because you like Mango. Just as much as Christopher Walken did in SNL. Oh, man, that was awful. Uh, that was just you know, Patrick fucking is what I call a fag stag. Uh, kind of like Adam Campbell. What? Yeah, much like Adam Campbell. <laughs> they know they're straight, but are so desperate for any positive attention that they'll walk into an AIDS clinic and roll around in the testing lab. What? <laughs> you know, Patrick, buddy, I also know you hit the gym. Uh, too bad you can't beef up your ball sack the way you did your <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, oh. Or you formally did your gut. Um, I mean, biceps can only do so much, buddy. You know, I like to say if your sack ain't swinging, then you ain't breeding. And, uh, but Patrick really? is a good guy, though. He is. He's a, he's a cute little exhibitionist. If you want to see Patrick, uh, if you want to see what Patrick sends me over Facebook in the middle of the night, just pick up the next copy of Horns Magazine. We have a leprechaun photo spread <laughs> out in June. Just letting you know. I'm happy to have that, so, uh, that all the people I asked Adam to join me on this roast are here because many of the people here have been mentors to me, and Horns wouldn't have uh, come to fruition if it weren't for one of those mentors. Magister, Doctor, yada yada Bob Johnson. <laughs> he, he's been a wonderful <laughs> asset and is always um, ready to give me any advice I need, uh, which he is happy to give because it gives him a chance to type out all the precursors to his name. Bob <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Johnson is the man of too many titles, including the Hugh of the Average Chick. Um, Bob has been publishing porn for decades, and you think at some point he would have figured out that not only did Suicide Girls beat him to it, but they did it a lot. Uh, that's hilarious. Bob, you know, that's probably why Bob loves a good cocktail party and uh, that whole gentleman's culture of the '50s and early '60s. You know, it's it's his aesthetic, and it works for him. But uh, you know, as usual, he's late to that party and clueless as to why no one else is there and why no one else is interested. <laughs> you know, Bob is just trying to um, you know, bring back an era where men were men and women were irrelevant, except <laughs> really? it makes sense that he would idolize the rat pack. A group of unattractive men who use their power and their money to get attractive girls for fondling and justifying their alcoholism. You know, I think Bob and Tom speak the same language. I believe it's called too much before happy hour. And speaking of drinking, we all know I'm no stranger to the bottle. I drink through most of my interviews. But um, 
I can't beat Darren Deicide's Belgium copycat Tom over there. I mean, <laughs> Jesus, man, you're like half whiskey and tobacco tar. The first time I met Tom, I thought to myself, Jesus, this is what Darren Deicide would look like if he if he was less Asian-y, on stilts, and swallowed a bunch of cum-covered golf balls. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. You know, I hope you guys caught what Tom was saying when he was making fun of me, because I didn't between his stuttering mm-hmm. stupors and his never his ceaseless mumblings. You know, <laughs> calm down there on the syrup, buddy. We already have a Mr. Ed in this country, and under the new immigration era uh, plan, we're not going to have to. <laughs> that was just fucking awful. Awesome. No, Darren. We've known each other for so long that you could have been accused of corrupting a minor. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, Darren, Darren's like a brother to me. He's like family. And, um, and that's because we connect on a lot. You know, Darren and I connect on many things other than Satanism. Um, it's like a footnote to us. Uh, chief among them was our difference with the majority of people. You know, I'm a man who likes men, and he is a man who thinks he's a black guy in the 1930s. <laughs> Darren and I have talked a lot about trans rights and transgenderism lately, and um, and he understands. He does. He can empathize with transgendered people. Um, he is, after all, transracial, and uh, dead set on what South Park called the Negroplasty. Right? <laughs> I believe he's at the phase of living like what he wants to become. Um, I I also think. M.A. or token is donating the pigment to finish his uh, Caucasia plan. <laughs> but all the cu- uh, cultural appropriation Darren engages in, he's a man's man at the end of the day. Well, you know, besides the dancing. <laughs> and geeking out over Warhammer. <laughs> and playing model. Star Wars modeling on plastic sheets. <laughs> only with his girlfriend. <laughs> and juggling, and challenging 12-year-olds to win a trophy in a shape of Chewbacca. <laughs> he's, he's a man's man. But he carries a strong and masculine tradition of doing really stupid shit with any physical activity. I mean, this is the guy who cracked ribs while sledding, and then decided to throw a party immediately after. I love you, dude. But you're like the poster boy of why we're the disposable gender. <laughs> but he can't. You know, Darren's not alone on that poster. He's not. I mean, it says faux manhood at the top, and then there's Darren Deicide and Adam Campbell. Adam <laughs> is like a prime example of the alpha male, a natural leader, disciplined, and his rugged masculinity just oozes sex appeal with his oh-so-well-defined body that he likes to show you oh. every fucking chance he gets. <laughs> including his really big, like, sand dollar-sized nipples. I mean, what, 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 were you a woman in the past? I mean, Jesus. You know, it's, it's astounding how much that man does to prove he is worth paying attention to. Uh, someone took his 12 o'clock synthesizer reading a bit too seriously. Yeah, the man builds a stage, or built a stage, that he can't get off of. Um, you know, he's like Donald Trump on Twitter. You just <laughs> take the phone away. But a- any new hobby or thought that Adam has, he's ready to share. He's ready to blast on social media that he's oh so vocal against. And you know, Adam, it's okay to just sit in your garden and watch another chicken shit out some eggs for you to talk about. Wait, no, wait. No, I got, I got four hours. Oh, it's He's going to start talking about his family. I got to talk about the chicken. <laughs> but, yeah, at, at the end, thank you all so much for making fun of me. I think it's about time we did this in public because I know all of you are so jealous that I am far more popular in my mid-20s than you ever were in your 40s. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Hail Satan, love you all. Well, not anybody watching this, just, just the people who are on it. Right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone on the dais and the den. You're the best, man. Now, everyone watching, thank you so much for tuning in. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel, sign up to the email list, and like and share this video. And until we can speak of the devil again, hail Satan. Thank you for joining us yet again. 
Who would have thought lightning could strike a turd this bad twice? Not for nothing, but with porn out there, what the hell are any of you doing watching this? You can learn more about Speak of the Devil online at reverendcampbell.com and watch the following spellbinding reels for links to the other sad, self-hating masochists featured on this, uh, whatever the fuck it is. I, I don't even know anymore. My name's Cameron John. You can find me online at Instagram. Uh, just fucking look me up. Or if you want to see the really interesting shit, go to YouTube and look up the Infernal Brotherhood of Scruffy-looking Nerf Herders. That's awesome. Anyways, until next time, fucking bye, I guess. Have fun. I'm sorry you had to watch this. <laughs>